Hello, I am the maintainer of the Cute Quick Effect Maker module and I thought that I will do a, a live shader coding video to demonstrate how it can be used. So this is what we will hopefully re-implement during this video. Uh, this animated bars effect, which can be used in any Cute Quick UI component. And here we have used it in a Quick Controls progress bar and a slider components. But before we start coding, let's first check that uh, why we want to do this using a shader effect. So doing this as shader effect allows easy customization. Bar size, colors, angle, animation speed and so forth can be easily changed at the runtime. And then the rendering is fully scalable. Animations, uh, animations are fluid and they are not uh, looping and you can change the anti-aliasing amount freely. Uh, I could call this a mathematically correct, some designers might call it pixel perfect. Uh, also, doing this effect as a custom shader performs very well, uh, also on embedded devices. And to demonstrate this, here is a simple example showing 100 progress bars uh, with random settings running on Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 and it's running on a solid 120 FPS. Cute and shaders are both known for performance, so, so this is a perfect match. And then why would you want to do this uh, effect using a Cute Quick Effect Maker? And my claim is that, that if you are a technical artist or a developer who understands GLSL shading language, then the Effect Maker live preview where you can see instantly the changes in shader uh, gives huge productivity gain uh, for faster iterations. And also the way the effect maker automatically exports QML component with the suitable API increases the productivity. So then we can start looking at the source code and let's start that by looking at the main.qml file. We create first a window and then the logo image, the cute logo. And then we create our custom bar image component, which is a, a scalable image container, which has a left part and right part of the bar. And then the center part of the bar is tiled horizontally. And this bar image we use then in our custom progress bar. So we extend the Qt Quick Controls progress bar with our fluid progress bar named component. And we have some properties which are alias into our bars effect. And the way we customize this progress bar is that we change the background property so that it contains the mask image, which is not visible. And then the bar effect, which takes in the mask image. And then on top of that, we add a, another bar image for the overlay of the bar. And we use a text to show the percentage of the progress uh, with the multi-effect component to create the shadow for the text so it is nicely visible on top of the bar. And we do the same thing for the quick, Qt Quick Control Slider component. So we call it Fluid Slider and it kind of behaves the same way as the progress bar. And here we then create four of these fluid progress bars and one fluid slider. So the outcome looks like this. We have our slider and four of our progress bars. Then let's look at this uh, bars effect. And it's in here. So first thing to note is that this is created with the Qt Quick Effect Maker. So actually you don't want to modify this uh, with the Qt Creator, this QML file. 
and the effect maker export this file and it, it exports the shaders and the images that are needed for this effect. So what you want to do instead is open this bars effect uh, project file with the effect maker. So when I added this as a system editor, I just need to double click it, this file and it opens in the Qtcook effect maker. And now if I change the source image to the bar image that we have, you will see what it looks like in the effect maker. But instead of showing it in here more, we want to start from scratch doing this effect. So let's just clear the node view and we can start from the beginning. And the way we start is that we create first a custom node, so empty node, which doesn't do anything. And when I double click this, I will get to edit the shader code. So let's make it so that it uh, creates white color to all the pixels. So we create a new variable called color one and we make this red like this. And then we make frag color to use this color one. So it creates everything red. And let's not continue with the bar effect more at this point, other than I will rename this and call this bars. And let's make a helper node, a custom node again. And this is called temp overlay. It's temp because uh, we will remove this, uh, disable this node uh, before we export the, the effect. It's just to help us, us creating this effect. So what we want to do is that right now in the main node, we take the source image and add it into the frag color. So what happens is that it's actually behind our bars node content. So we want to move this into the temp overlay. And instead of modifying frag color, let's create a new property called overlay. So if we add this, oops, overlay into our frag color, it will just override everything. And that's not what we want. We want to do ni nice blending. Uh, so you could try uh, like this, just multiply or add, but it doesn't look nice. So instead we use the mix function and we mix between uh, frag color and overlay based on the overlay uh, alpha channel. So now we got nice blending. Next thing we do is the we want to do a little masking for our bars. So let's create a new node again and this time we can start it from the opacity mask. So it already masks our our content of our bars but it uses the cute logo as the bar image. So let's change that first and use our bar mask so we get nice masking. And let's customize this a little bit. One thing uh, we don't need is this, this invert property as we're not going to invert our mask. So let's just remove this and remove our uh, invert property as we don't need it. And uh, then what we want to do is we want to change the masking based on the value. 
So let's create a new property called value and it changes between zero and one. And now we can use this uh, in our shader. So if we would do this so that opacity mask amount uh, is multiplied by value, it would look like this, which is not what we want, of course. What we want instead is that this uh, uh, changes in the X coordinate while we change the value. So for that we will use the step function like this and we use the um, text coordinate dot X and the value. And now we will see that it, it changes based on the value. So how the step function works is that if the first parameter is, is smaller, it outputs one, and if the first parameter is bigger than the second parameter, it outputs zero. So now we have a good start to continue with the actual bars effect. Let's first increase uh, the font size a little bit so that the shaders are easier to see. Mm, yep, I think that's good. Uh, then we can move this uh, color one variable to be a QML property. So let's delete this and instead have a color property called color one. That can be by default black. Yes, and then let's add another one, color 2, uh, and that can be white by default. You can then change this in, in QML. And we will use a mix function to switch between color 1 and color 2 based on some new variable called bar. So let's do this. When it's zero, it's the color one. When it's one, it's color two. And when we are in, in between, we mix those white and black. And yes. So how do we make the bars? One way would be to use sin function. So we would use frog chord x times, for example, 0.1. Let's do a little bit smaller. So we would use first sin and then, then the step function or something like that. Uh, but the scene doesn't perform as well as, as if we make a kind of triangle wave. So let's do that. Let's use ups 2.0 times and instead of scene, yes, let's do it. fract. And then we will minus 1.0 let's take this more than you will see so now we have a triangular wave which changes between 0 and 1 and to get bars from this uh, we can use the step function and as we want those bars to be same size we use 0 0.5 so which is in, in between those those values like this uh, next what we would do we could change this so that we will start to get a more QML properties so 
so now it's like it used to be. And we can start by adding a angle. So bar angle. And it can be between minus one and plus one. So you can uh, rotate the angle to both directions. And we will use this angle so that we will use here also the frac chord y times our bar angle. Let's try if it works. Yes, now we can rotate the bar. And next thing we could do is to make the bar width adjustable. So let's do a bar size. Default to 10 pixels. Minimum could be 5 and maximum 100 pixels. So to get this uh, bar size uh, we need to multiply with something, let's call it S bar, and generate this S bar. Uh, we want to make it resolution independent, so it's actually pixels. So let's do it like this. Oops. Our size times 0 0.5 and we use 0 0.5 because uh, uh, like there are two bars in, in one uh, wave. And then to make this actually work we need a uh, kind of uh, resolution independent pixel. So I resolution dot x uh, yeah so let's do it like this 1.0 divided by resolution x and then we will multiply px here so now it's 10 pixels now it's 100 pixels yeah it works Uh, then we want to bars to animate when we start the time. So let's make a variable for that. Uh, movement. And by default we can move it towards left. So let's put the minus i time there. And this will be also resolution independent and we make speed property that that you can configure the speed so it is maximally like 100 pixels per second and minus 100 so you can animate it to both directions And then in here we plus the moment like this. Oops. Nope. Doesn't work. Why? Oh, it works probably, but speed is zero. So let's. Yep. So now it works. It can animate to both directions. Uh, looks a bit slow so let's make it faster so you can for example have minus 400 to 400 pixels per second yes now it's better so one thing to note now that when you zoom in you see that there is a bit aliasing and this happens because we are using step function. And to anti-alize, we change this to smooth step. 
and if we small step between 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 it doesn't change anything so we need some kind of smoothness let's call it and we use it here and now you can see those are much smoother let's uh, zoom out you see it's a little bit too small and you also see that there is an issue that if you change the bar size here you still see aliasing effect and here it's a bit too smooth so we need to make this a smoothness depend on the bar size so the way to do it is that we multiply like this oops bar size yes now it works it's a bit too much maybe something like four Yes, I think that's good. So, now our effect is ready. We can change the colors, we can change the angle, we can change the speed. Yes, it should be okay. So let's export this now. Uh, we disable our temporary overlay and export and then we can switch back to the bars effect and it says that yes your bars effect or your QML has changed yes I know and let's run and see if it works yes so one thing we can still do is to change the default values as you see as you can see in, in our slider. Let's reset our colors and maybe the bar size also to 10 pixels. Angle and speed can be can be those, I think. And let's re-export that and see what happens again yes and now when we run this yeah yes so the power size and the colors have changed i think that's it thank you very much for watching this and and i'll see you in the next video bye bye